Hello, I'm Jeff Wong. I'm EY's Chief Global Innovation Officer. And I'm here at the Oxford Foundry where we had a wonderful kickoff event last night. Um, really a special place and really, I think, a special um, asset to the university uh, going forward now, now that we've kicked it off. Um, I'm here with the Dean of the Said Business School at Oxford, Peter Tufano, and Ilona Budapesti, the President of Oxford Entrepreneurs. And we're going to talk today about entrepreneurship in Oxford and the Oxford Foundry. I'm going to hand it off to you. Yes, Jeff. So today's topic is mostly about the ecosystem, how you bring together students, us, academics, businesses, and startups in this environment. So I would like to start by asking the Dean, Peter Tufano, to talk a little bit about what is the mission of the Oxford Foundry. So the, the mission of the Foundry is to educate young people to become more entrepreneurial. Some of them will become entrepreneurs. Some of them will actually start businesses. Others may just learn a set of skills, learn how to deal with failure, learn how to work in teams, learn how to manage a complicated project, learning to stay close to the needs of customers, uh, learning how to kind of transition from in different ways. Um, if we teach those skills as an educational institution, our students will be well served whether they become entrepreneurs or lawyers or doctors or the next prime minister, of which Oxford has had many. Um, having said that, part of the foundry is specifically to support businesses that are coming from student ventures, whether they're social enterprises or whether they're commercial enterprises. But as we heard last night at the opening of the foundry, um, whether it's a social enterprise or a commercial enterprise, you can have business with purpose and that business can improve the state of the world. Great. So as the student representative here, of course, we are the beneficiary of your hard work. Would you tell us a little bit about all the parties that have come together and the main drivers that made this possible? Sure. So we have been blessed, and I think that's the right word, with a set of partners who have, have come to help us to turn this dream into reality. These would include, for example, our donors. Uh, so our senior advisor, Reed Hoffman, uh, a year ago, a little over a year ago, uh, gave a, a challenge grant of a million dollars so that we could get started. And he basically said, okay, Peter, go out and find more money and then you can get this project off, off the ground. Um, uh, the Immersy Foundation, which has funded the accelerator upstairs, EY, uh, Jeff, we're here with Jeff and here today, uh, Meltwater, uh, or even Barclays has provided the furniture. So first of all, it's, it's the people who've put financial backing behind this. Second, it's a set of people who have literally given up their lives and their summers to turn this place into reality. Yeah. Uh, what everybody around, you know, on the other side of the camera can't see is that we're in this beautifully renovated Victorian building and 15 of my staff worked for 15 weeks to turn this into what I think we would all agree is a cool, hip, functional, uh, very kind of great karma place. <laughs> uh, and so I'm, we're blessed with them. Advisors, we have a set of people who need to advise you as students because as smart as you are, you need some help. Um, we have an advisory board headed by Brent Hoberman uh, from the founder of Last Minute Travel, Made.com, and Founders Forum. Uh, and then we have friends who've come from all over the world to support us. There are entrepreneurs from all sorts of places who are, are going to come and help. And last night, we, you know, I was pleased because you know one of the Uber entrepreneurs, not Uber, but uh, um, but. Uh, <laughs> Tim Cook from Apple was here, um, and he, along with Reed, helped us to kick off this first, uh, first event. Uh, so we're going to try to bring all the resources we can, not just of Oxford, but of the world, to come here to support and nurture student entrepreneurs at Oxford. And I am incredibly enthusiastic about the possible outcomes. Great. I have one more question for sure. you before we go over to Jeff, which is, a, uh, if you could tell us what's on offer here for the students. I think at the opening, which was a smashing success, it was such a packed full house, you mentioned a little bit. And also, what criteria is there for people to be able to join sure. the Foundry? So the Foundry is open to all Oxford students, all 23,195 <laughs> students here at Oxford, as well as to staff and faculty. Um, what I mentioned last night is that think of this in terms of three layers. At the bottom layer are people who want to know something about entrepreneurship. They want to be educated, they want to be informed, they want to be inspired. Um, they might want you know, talks like last night's talk with Tim, or they might want a session on how to code, or they might want to, to come to Confessions of an Entrepreneur where more struggling entrepreneurs are, are sharing 
the reality of being an entrepreneur. Um, in the middle, there are students who say, I want to get engaged, I want to do something, but I don't want to start a business. They might want to be part of a hackathon or a business plan competition. Um, and some of this we'll be doing in conjunction with EY. At the very top of the pyramid, there'll be students who say, I want to start a business. I want to get the resources that would help me start a business. I want some space, I want mentoring, maybe I want some seed capital. The bottom is open to everybody. You have an Oxford ID, you walk in the building. The middle, open to everybody. The top, you have to earn your way. So the best ideas, the best student ideas will filter their way up, upstairs, literally upstairs to the, the, the uh, Mercy Accelerator. So uh, open to everybody, but with most things, uh, in order to earn you know, all of the benefits of the, of the Accelerator, you're going to have to demonstrate that you've put in some good thinking and good work. And I have no doubt that it'll be There'll be amazing numbers of students who are competing to get upstairs and will succeed. Oh, thank you, Peter, for all of this. I'm thank going you. to move over to Jeff, our celebrity <laughs> guest, actually. And I just wanted to say, as the president of Oxford Entrepreneurs, I hope all students will go to our website, by the way. But what an honor it is to have the global uh, chief innovation officer right next to me in this really historical space. And if you could start with just telling us a little bit about your role at EY yep. and especially how EY is supporting this community and how are you interacting with startups and students if you would talk about that. Yes, so uh, my job at EY broadly speaking is to create new. So it's new business we'll be in, new services we want to offer, new ways of delivering those services, new approaches to the old services that we've done for many years. Mm -hmm. um, and so as a part of that what we recognize is that we have to have an entrepreneurial mindset. So my team specifically focuses on things like internally funded startups, so we have a portfolio of those. Mm -hmm. uh, advanced technologies, artificial intelligence, blockchain, a lot of the cool words of today, and there will be many more cool words over the coming years. Yeah. And so I'm in the global labs around those things as well. And so for us, what we realized is we really needed, well, I think Peter put it best, an ecosystem around us. We need to be able to talk not just to the large companies who are peers out there in the world, but we need to get into the universities and talk to students directly. And this is really one of our efforts. We're, we're so proud to be a part of this founder. We're so proud to be able to participate in this with you um, because it gives us an opportunity to really have this discussion directly with students, whether it's through a hackathon, whether it's through talks that we'll become a part of, whether it's, it's just having our team be able to interact with students and the startups in the space um, that's really what we look forward to, and that's the interaction that I think will be useful for us and hopefully for the students as well. Awesome. Um, I would love to ask you something about specific to Oxford, because you have this fantastic oversight globally. You interact with amazing universities, you go to startup hubs all over the world. Is there something, one or two things, that you specifically like about the Oxford Foundry or Oxford well, in general? I mean, Oxford as a as a reputation, right? You you you. It's it's clearly one of the strongest reputations in the world as a university, and then you put that together with the fact that you're one of the most prolific uh, startup centers as a university in all of Europe and all of the world. And so this is really the center for where a lot of the new things happen. Um, you stack on top of that, you're I think the number one unicorn uh, uh, producer. In Europe, so I mean, you put that those facts together along with the global nature of the university itself, mm -hmm. and I think that when you put that alchemy together, that chemistry, you put all that together, it's just a great space. It's the right time. Yeah. It's the right set of students, and so we're really just looking forward to being a part of it. Great. And the question for the both of you: What is it about creating not just small programs but an ecosystem? for university startups that you find is, is important? So at the core of the word university is universe. <laughs> uh, and I think that means being inclusive. Uh, the strongest teams will come from people with very different backgrounds, people mm -hmm. who think like engineers and people who think like philosophers, people who are from Africa and people who are from North America and Europe. And you know what we hope that this foundry will do and I think it represents, as Jeff said, the kind of the fundamental DNA of Oxford uh, is to pull together students from all different kinds of backgrounds. Half of the students here are STEM, half of them are non-STEM. Uh, half of them are undergraduates, half of them are non-undergraduates. I mean, if you put all that mix together, remarkable things happen. 
and I think that's our hope. Great. You know, when I when I think about um, why you need an ecosystem, I actually think about uh, growing up and how people grow up and how I grew up. And mm -hmm. you have coaches and mentors and teachers and parents and all these people around you who helped create who you are. And I think that's the same thing about being an entrepreneur, about doing a startup, about a young company, about new companies and creating new things, is you need that entire system, that entire network around you to be able to help lift you to where you're going. I mean, Silicon Valley loves the, the hero story, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the hero myth that, that it was a singular individual who lifted the entire company up the entire thing to the detriment of everyone around him and I think that that isn't the true story and I think we heard a bit of this story last night yeah. in the introduction yeah. from Raid and Tim and it was really around how we do it together. Mm -hmm. We do it together with the people we work with, we do it together with our partners and alliances, we do it together with students, we do mm -hmm. it together with um, the universities and the academics and by doing it together we'll create the world that we want. Excellent. I have a student-focused question. If both of you could say one or two things that students can hope to get out of it. Although we talked about it specifically, I would be very interested if you could talk a little bit about both the hiring aspect and maybe the investment aspect, because we see this as a student group as being very, very in high demand. Mm -hmm. So uh, our senior advisor, Reid Hoffman, wrote a book called The Start Review. Uh, and in it, he gives advice to young people like you and the members of OE, which is you know this incredibly large organization, the largest student society in I think all of Europe. I think so. Kudos to you. Um, and what it describes is you know he says that that your generation has to think like you're a startup. Mm -hmm. You have to invest in yourself. You have to kind of pivot. You have all those things that a startup might do. Uh, you're going to have to do. You think about what entrepreneurship's about. It's the pursuit of opportunity beyond the resources under your control. That's your life. That's your career. That's really um, and so, you know, from my perspective, you know, if we can help build that mindset to students, then whether they become entrepreneurs or whether they go work, whatever, yeah. they'll be better in what they do. And hopefully, if we do it in an Oxford way, they'll do it in a principled and responsible fashion. Awesome. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Peter. It's really around, when you think about careers over the next five or 10 years, it'll be different than the previous mm -hmm. 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. yes. um, we used to be able to rely on teaching skills, specific skills that could last you a lifetime. Um, the skills are still important, skills are still useful. Mm -hmm. But now it's about learning how to learn, learning how to evolve through situations that are changing constantly and changing very quickly. And that's really what I think the Oxford Foundry gives all students, no matter if you're at that top of that, that scale and starting your own company or just somebody who wants to come in and here and participate in some of the activities that are here. It gives you a sense of how to create something in an uncertain environment or a changing environment. Yeah. That's a skill set that will be useful whether you work at a startup that's your own, you join a small team, whether you join a firm like EY, which is 250,000 people around the wow. world. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's quarter of a million people. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. But it's an important skill set for what we find for our staff too. Excellent. So excited. We do have to wrap up. So maybe just one final thought from each of you about the importance and some kind of excitement about this little ecosystem that you have created for us. Uh, you know, uh, this has been a dream of mine for a number of years and to see it turn to reality last night was, was magic. Uh, I think if you were in the room last night, as both of you were, yeah, it, it was, was the sheer energy of yes. the young people in this room waiting to be unleashed uh, was so palpable. Um, so I'm full of hope and also full of gratitude to EY and to our other friends because you've made it happen. Well, for me, Jeff? it's, it's uh, uh, for the students, Oxford Foundry makes it easier to, for you to create the world that you want. And as Peter said, we believe in the students here that it'll be done in a principled way, um, a way that has purpose, a way that will help people in the world. And so to, to be able to be a small part of this, to be able to be a small part of the support around what you're building here, um, you know, we, we just hope we can help support the students, create the stories of their lives, and again, create the world that they want to create, that they want to live in. Great. Well, in name of all students here at Oxford University, thank you both.
Pleasure. It's over to you now because your generation has to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, and uh, that's all from us. And look for more Facebook Live broadcasts from us in the near future.